one of the garbage cans. Get the garbage can so we can throw stuff in it. Sure. The problem is you won't fit in there. Where is Josh at? It's on his way, buddy. So I just got a phone call from my new job today, and unfortunately, they need me to start as soon as possible. Um, I guess they ended up having a guy quit, and they need me right now. Hard to find people you can count on, isn't it? You know, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to leave early, and Mark's just gonna have to deal with it, you know? And I've done the same for him, and I really hope he understands. I gotta go, man. I gotta go. go um, some guy just got fired at the job that I'm gonna be starting at. Couldn't give a shit last. Well, I gotta go, man. I no. cannot, dude, I can't say no to him. I can't. Well, the fuck you can't. I'm your boss. I've been putting up with a lot of shit anyway out of you, and you're not gonna take off and go down there. Dude, I have to. I've done the same for you. Do it at your own, do it at your own risk then. Do it, whoa, 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 whoa. What does that mean? If you leave, don't come back. So who would you rather, I guess, uh, offend? Me or them, that's really what it comes down to. Well, see, like it's No, no, it's just a, it's just Well, a, if you want an answer, let me tell you, because you need to step in my okay. shoes before you start judging. Tell me, tell because me. I'm straddling the fence, and it seems like any which way I go, bam, right down the middle. No offense, Hoss. I don't want to do it, but I but have to But you need to, to take it. better care, a little bit. I mean, not so bad, but you need to take a little bit better care of him than, than... I guess I'm trying to please everybody here, and it's like, I seem to be doing more damage to myself than anybody else. You know, there, every relationship has a, has that defining moment in it. Uh, choosing one person over another is usually a pretty defining moment. Josh did, he chose somebody else, so we'll just see how it goes. So, uh, I'll see you later. Are you gonna help or stare? All right. Peacemaker. You're the biggest fighter the planet ever saw. The unburied dead, the unburied dead are coming back to life, are coming back to life. My name's Mark Warman. I'm Darren Kirkpatrick. And we get paid to bring dead cars back to life. We work with my best friend, Royal, and my son-in-law, Josh. We search far and wide to find how a car was built, where it spent its life, and how it died. After that, we bring it back to look exactly the way it did on the day it was born. If we don't kill each other. You shut your mouth before I actually punch you out. Can I leave a handprint on your face? Graveyards as busy as ever. Our uh, Lemon Twist Yellow AAR Cuda is completely disassembled and waiting to go off to the Media Blaster. And our Quadruple Black 71 Cuda Phantasm car is at a standstill. We're just waiting for the last load of parts so we can do the final put together on that. Our Daytona Charger now has all of the back sheet metal done, interior floor sheet metal, pillars, rockers, floors, everything that needed to be repaired or replaced has been done. The only things that are left are the left front apron, frame rail, and upper cowl panel. And Mark and Elena's 1970 383 CUDA is almost ready for the final paint. That truck has a lot of dents in it. Have you seen it? The dents in the doors and stuff? That thing's wavy as an ocean. Darren is the only guy on the entire planet that would try to bring another man down over a brand new tow truck. Try to pick apart a brand new tow truck to make the person who got it feel bad about it. That's a sickness. That's what I meant when I said a black coal where his heart should be. So when I reached out to Jared Dan and I asked him for a rollback and told him what the specific needs and requirements of Graveyard Cars is, they started putting together a unit. But I had no idea it was a Mopar. It's a Dodge 5500. Then they shipped it over to their selling dealer, the person who accommodated it, which was Twin State Equipment. They treated us like royalty. It's those kind of vendors and that kind of quality service. That's what we provide, and it's really nice when we receive it back. Hey. Let him get out of the way, Mark. And so as time goes on, it becomes more and more evident to me that you've really got to have those quality vendors like Jaredan, like Twin State, like Chrysler, like some of the people that have helped us out with this season. Equally, it would be nice if we had really great help here at the shop. Not two bozos who can't align a car to go up onto a rollback. Little help guiding it, guys. and here's the two 
and quarter glasses that I specifically asked Josh to make sure weren't in the car. Take that, please. What happened? If I hadn't caught it, there's a reasonable chance they'd have started media blasting him and they'd etch the glass. This is the problem with Josh. He's, he's, he's a space cadet. If he left those in there and they got blasted, then I gotta go find 70 date coated glass. I'm already not missing Josh for that reason. There goes two fish, a shark and a cuda. Mark is a shark. You ever seen a whale shark? They're huge. And all they do is eat plankton, I believe, or little microscopic things, right? A whale shark. Mm -hmm. All they are is a whale. They call them a whale shark. This one has a little bit of blue still on it. Like a time capsule, isn't it? It's Big Brother. Big Brother expands into graveyard cars. That's what that is. But here's what I was saying earlier. That's that factory blue assembly line marking. It's a lot of fun for me when somebody like Chris comes down who is a good client. They're happy to have their car restored, but they're very knowledgeable. Just where the assembly car. guy would put a daub on there. Yeah. I just think that there's, sometimes there's things that we don't realize because we don't have the luxury of just going in and looking at a car that's never been touched, like encapsulated. We could talk about the components and all the peripheral things that go onto the car and how awestruck I was that everything that came off of that car is like mint, borderline not even needing restore. This one has a little bit of blue still on it. Like a time capsule, isn't it? It is. Some, something welded onto this? It's this right here, and this is correct. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is yeah. the code for the 346 pack 72. Really? Yeah. So they get their own K-frame even. I guess. Huh. At least the 340 does. If that suspension was already built out on a shelf somewhere, that would probably be the reason you'd want a tag on it, because so they'd know what to put it under. Mm -hmm. A number 53 goes under any of the TAAR cars. A number 54 might go underneath a, right. a 340 automatic or something. So, mm. And rear end, same thing. It's got like... The zero for the 70 right there is still intact. Orange paint showing that these were checked and that the uh, differential was full of oil. The numbers that go across here are washed off over the years. So sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. Black, glossy black paint. What little bits left of it on the sway bar. Yeah. Before I saw one of these uh, unpainted, I thought this was all bare natural finish. That even the even these are black. Hmm. Everything about them is black. And all the Transam cars came with the rear yep. sway, right? Yep, yep, yep. Part of the package. Yep, absolutely. The 11 inch drums, this one's got the 355s, got the heavy duty leaf springs, mandatory power disc brakes. You know, these cars, they weren't just a pretty face. I mean, they were really a full package car. These cars, the AA Arcuda and the Challenger TA are to autocrossing what the Superbird and the Daytona were to NASCAR. These are, these are and were groundbreaking cars. Uh, and it's just really fun to be able to chit chat back and forth and BS and talk about all the uniqueness that make those cars what they are. I was gonna ask you, the fender tags, I know you've already told me this. Did you have those made or are those? Original. They are, God, they're beautiful. They're absolutely mint. Mm -hmm. They are now in my office, in case you're wondering. <laughs> As I got to looking at them a little closer, I could see that he absolutely is right. They are the originals. Mint condition, just like his dash was, just like the door panels were, just like the floors of the car were, just like the everything that we took out of the car. It's all just really nice, which makes my job a lot easier. But I'm just amazed at how nice all the gauges are. Yeah, I was really impressed when I saw that. These dashes are always cracked up, yep. especially at the speaker corners. Every corner in the speakers on these things, or the, every time. Or the vent corners were mm -hmm. cracked, and this one is just amazingly perfect. It's pristine. Yeah. Everything unplugged like it should. We left everything original and, and intact so we can get all our photos so we can go back together exactly. Did all you already right. do your motor? Motor's all done, all ready to go. So let me guess, you're it just waiting to get your car back so you can put it in. Our, one of the last engines that Dick Ott built, which is a, a real popular Mopar engine builder in Portland, and he passed away maybe six months after he built that motor. Dick Ott, huh. He was real popular. All the Mopar guys took their motors to him. Just a little shop on 82nd Avenue. Wow. You know, I remember when Chris first told me the story about him finding that AA Arcuda when he was a kid. Basically, here's this guy, he's 16 years old. He hadn't had his first car yet, been saving money. He'd saved up $2,500. This car was rough. The corner, the back corner of the driver's hood. Which is that side. Was missing. So Chris ended up passing on the car. 25 years later, I meet a guy who actually came over and bought a car for me. 
and we got to talking. He said he had a yellow AAR he wanted to sell. He goes out and looks at the car, puts a deal together, never even dawning on it. Never even thinking about that being the car he passed on when he was a kid. It looked like it had good solid bones and looked like everything was there and matching number motor on a stand and build sheet and the whole work. So I said, yeah, I'll take it. God, that's so crazy. <laughs> it wasn't until he bought the car, was driving back and got to thinking, God, well, that could be the same car. There can't be too many of them up here. The wheels start turning. Uh huh. And I think, how many yellow four-speed AARs can there be in Oregon? Right, right. So I thought, well, I wonder. And I took a look at this corner of the hood, and it looked a lot different than that corner. So obviously, this corner has been repaired. That corner had been off of that car at some point in his life. And that was the nail in the coffin for him to decide that is the car that I passed on. Exact same hood spot. That's that such an amazing it. story. So the car was in the exact same shape that it was in when he looked at it 25 years earlier, except he paid a whole lot more money for it. He should have bought it back when he was a kid. But well, let's go unload some parts. Okay, awesome. All right. Okay, so we got headlight bezels. Oh, nice. And the trim. All black. And a lot of the grill hardware. So it was pretty well together. Yeah, yeah. is it was so complete coming apart. Now when it goes back together and you have everything, we don't have to spend weeks looking for it. So it looks like, I, I think with what you brought down today and all the stuff that you had jammed into the car, and remember I got all the big dollar stuff in the office. The big order for aftermarket's gonna be pretty small now. That's that's great. I'm excited. Well, thanks for coming down, man. You bet. I really appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having seeing us. You. Absolutely, anytime. Yeah, it was nice to visit and see the place. And we're impressed. I've been wanting to get a security system here anyway. The cars that we're starting to get in now are a lot more expensive than the ones before. Right now we have probably a million and a half dollars worth of classic cars out there. So I would like to have that for that standpoint. Hi, this is Mark with Graveyard Cars down in Springfield, Oregon. I was wondering if I could talk to somebody about your security systems that you offer. So I started looking around on Google and I came across Defender. So you even have the ability with a smartphone that I could actually watch some of the footage from wherever I'm at on, on the cell phone is at. So after talking to the guys there and telling them exactly kind of the layout of the shop and what my requirements were gonna be, he recommended the eight channel system, it comes with eight cameras, but it's expandable so I can add to it later. It's gonna give me the ability to obviously protect the shop from the standpoint of looking back if something did happen, if something grew legs or if, God forbid a fire started or something. But uh, equally with the idiots that work out there, I think it's gonna save me money. I would. You got Josh and Darren and Royal, they turn in time cards. Maybe they worked those hours, maybe they didn't. Maybe they were here working, but they didn't do anything. This Big Brother. Big Brother expands into graveyard cars. That's what that is. So Mark and Elena's Cuda has got its final prime on it and it's ready for paint. Uh, I don't have the time to hold the gun and do it right now. Plus I did all the magical stuff on it anyway. Uh, so I'm gonna have Derek gun it. Did he call him fatty? I'm gonna drill a hole in your neck and blast it with my fist. Why do you come with your brother like that? There's nothing we can do. Yo, fatty. Did he call him fatty? You call me fatty? Today, Mark wants the wet sand and buff to quarters of the 1973 Cudas that belong to Mark and Elena. Josh, AKA Judas, as per Mark, that's what Mark calls him, left us high and dry today. Supposedly he went to his new job one week early. That's pretty much unheard of, I believe. But anyway, left us high and dry here today without him. One of my uh, absolute favorite colors, FE5 Rally Red. Always comes out beautiful. 
It's got a gorgeous hue to it. It's a little bit orangish, a little bit reddish, kind of a scarlet. I really like the color. We're not usually seeing red. We've seen green and black and purples, but not any reds lately. It looks nice. It's a refreshing change. Give me some uh, thousand grit and three thousand. That how much I can do, is there? If you go in the mixing room and get us a couple of paint sticks. Wet sand and buffing basically is removing the impurities and the imperfections that happen during the paint process out of the paint. So if you have a dirt nib, if you have a run, if you have orange peel in it, you take a thousand grit sandpaper, 1200, something super fine on a stick. You long block it with that using soapy water so it lubricates it. Once the panel's completely flat, you go over it with some 3,000 grit sandpaper. That makes the scratches of the 1,000 come out really easy with a buffer. You put your new pad on, you put your compound on, and you start buffing it until you have a diamond. I know normally you hate this stuff, but right now we need this one done, so. I can do it. It's your problem, I mule. Nothing. I'm getting dizzy looking at it. When I got close to the car, I started getting dizzy and should have taken some Dramamine because the quarters were so wavy, I thought I was basically on the ocean. And I knew Mark was going to see that too. And sure enough, he steps out there and Lo and behold. Oh, God. Ah, Every car that we paint here, I want to be perfect, okay? I know the factory didn't do it perfect, but I do. When I look down the side of a car and I see the slightest little wave at a car show, it pisses me off. So I don't allow it to happen. I don't allow it to leave here. Normally, I do the last feel on these cars before they get painted. My guys are phenomenal, but they're just people too. It usually takes a couple of opinions. Do you see anything? Do you feel anything? Hey, who blocked this? Did you guys forget to block it? It's wavy, it's the ocean, you can't man. get that out with a paint stick. Got a wave in it that needs to be taken out. It's, it's not perfect, so Mark won't let it go. We'll have to repaint it. Can't I needed some that of that seasickness medicine when I looked down the side of it. I started getting sick. Here's the problem. Maybe if I wasn't doing absolutely everything else and now what little bit puke face did before he quit, I'm having to do it too. I could have come out and I could have finished feeling this Which before they face? painted it. Which puke face are you talking about? Which one of us? Because I've been busy picking up the little broken pieces that my friend Josh left me, I didn't have an opportunity to feel the car before it got painted for the last time. So now I'm out about $800 for the materials and set back two more weeks on it. What's that stuff called? Dramamine or something you get? Yep. I'm gonna have to go to the store and get some if we're gonna work on this one. I'll have to come in on my day off now and I'll have to long block these things and get rid of the waves that are in them, set them up so that the painter on Monday can go back in and repaint it. Then the paint will have to set for another week before we can do the wet sand and buff on it. And in the meantime, if you see that tall, bug-eyed, sunken in eyed looking mutant from hell, tell him that you love him. Tell him to stay a long way away from me because I'll kick his living shit right out of him. Who's gonna help you? Watch your mouth. Watch yours, you bald-headed son of a bitch. Your reflection, your walking <laughs> reflection, your spearhead, your bowling ball without holes, and you're a clown. Hey, Mark, don't take it and on. you're in no position to say anything you're either. You're taking on a royal, you far side you brow, because Josh quit. Serial killer looking eye. Because Josh put your strength Nose over to one side, one hey, passage sucked up all closed. you see clothes. anybody else here besides Funny us? Funny looking earlobes. You see anybody else here helping you? You run everybody yeah. else off, and now you're picking at us. Put everything back. I see why Josh left. Put everything back. I do too. So it's just another huge thank you to the meatball, the, the seven foot tall mutant. This is not a good start here at Graveyard Cars this week. Not only did Josh stand us up, left a week early, put the quarter panels on the car. Need a lot of work. I'll stand around like a bunch of monkeys. Start opening up the van stuff. I'm gonna get this piece ready to go together. We're going to be working the 1970 sunroof FC7, which is plum crazy challenger. So parts started trickling in this week. I wanted to get some of those parts on there and get them inventory so I know exactly what I have and what I don't have. We're gonna go ahead and put a few trinket pieces on, a little gingerbread, you know, something to dress it up. Get us a little more motivated. Yeah, brake pedal Darren, pad. Or, yeah. You have your original luggage rack or no? No, no, I don't. Did you just not order one with your car? No. What about the sunroof? Did you get one with your car? No. Power windows? No. Cruise control? I'll have to check Downs on that. Houndstooth interior? No, I got Cruise control interior. wasn't available interior. with the four speed. I got leather interior. Ew. Yeah. That's, that's standard on, ew. Standard on what? On an SE. Oh yeah? That's nothing. The reason I torture him is, is he's always torturing everybody else, okay? Everybody, he's always saying, oh, that's a plain hamburger car. Where's the shaker on it? Where's his stuff, okay? One of 916, yeah, it's rare. Where's the numbers tranny and everything for this car? Hey, is this car a four-speed or a slush box? This car's a slush box, it's automatic. It's a girl's car. He's just jealous. So we gotta set these pods on first. You know what would be really funny? 
is to strap somebody to that luggage rack and take off down the road and I'm strapped on there. Why would Darren think that's funny? He, he was an insurance adjuster. He's always protecting people. Put the safety glasses on, buddy. Hey, you need earmuffs, buddy. And now he's gonna throw some poor guy on a luggage rack on a 70 Dodge Challenger? Bipolar. Trying to climb the ladder of occupational, occupations, watch. This has a weight capacity of 300. We couldn't put you on here. Now shut up. It's all yours. Place them into position so that the cleat on the washer fits the footprint of the pedestal. And now, all, that's a pretty big word for uh, ever so zenserly, zenserly, open the lid for me. That's not zenserly. Hold that there. Well, I, I don't know if I'm going to do it right. I gotta put something on here. You guys go back to work. Okay. Okay, good. Thanks. I don't suppose we have the lock cylinders recoded and ready to go in there, huh? I haven't seen them yet. Yeah. Where That's are they? because last week I asked Josh to go out and get a pair of donor lock cylinders, have them recoded, polish the face of them, and have them out here on the assembly bench. My sending unit. Thank you, Mark. I've been expecting that. <laughs> You're never getting your parts back, Nancy. Why would I have to give back parts that were lent to me in a free clear conscience and, and unknowing that there's some deadline on it? You know, he took my stuff like this. <laughs> Why don't you dare take these? You know, what's, what's the difference if I take these, this stuff? That's stealing and I'll have you arrested. You stole mine. I borrowed yours. Well, can I get it back? Yeah, yeah, anytime you're ready for now, your piece. Now I don't have to be ready. I wasn't ready for him then. You were ready for him then. You were a lot closer then. Now you've taken a hiatus and you're not even trying you're on your car anymore. You're punched out now than you were so then. So bring it on, tough stuff. If I thought for a second that he was ready for the parts tomorrow, I'd have the parts there. But you don't lend somebody parts with just the, hey, go ahead and take it, buddy. We'll, we'll work it out later. Then all of a sudden yank the rug out from under me and make me look like a bad guy. We can't put the side markers in because we don't have the the backings form out yet, right? Correct. Housing. Do you have side marker light housings for your car? Can I have them? If I had ordered everything myself, it would be here. It would be right, and we would be installing it today. And we would be one day closer to finishing this car. But as it is, we're nearly at a complete standstill. I don't know what I can put in. There's nothing we can do. Absolutely nothing. The day is shot. Basically, today's kind of just gone to crap in a hand basket. Uh, I entrusted Josh to order most of the parts for the Sunroof Challenger. And uh, all I'm finding is I can't put one part in because there's another crucial part that's missing. Royals out pulling housings out of a 70 Challenger. It's exactly what happens when you don't do your job and order the right part. So we're out of things we can do on the Sunroof Challenger right now. So therefore I decided to send Royal out to the graveyard. I don't have anything to do inside, so I decided I'd join him. Whoa, there is a nest in that thing that won't stop. You're fine, just get in there. Don't start Nancy and out. Why did not get in there? There's my stuff. The Yellow Jackets are protecting my stuff. They're messengers from God. They're sent here to protect my parts from Mark, Royal, Josh, and Dougie. What the hell are you doing? Do rile up the bees. They're riled, man. What are you thinking? That's my stuff you don't need in there. No, don't. What are you doing, you freak? I hope they get stung. I hope they get stung twice. How does it make you feel when, when uh, Mark's going through your, your parts? Woo! I, must, I just got stung. Oh, don't, don't overreact, Yolanda. Well, he got to be mad at himself. He's the one that got them all riled up. I didn't do nothing. You just didn't fake that. Give him a Whoa, there's a stupid ah! yellow jacket! <laughs> there, was where I killed, there was, man. I'm allergic to those things, too. All right. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> the only thing that made this day at all enjoyable for me, it wasn't getting two parts on a car that we should have put 50 on. That should have excited me, too. But I really did enjoy seeing Darren get stung. Whoa. There's a stupid yellow jacket. I hope he goes into a prophylactic shock tonight. That would really crack me up. 
So, Aaron, you can take the side markers. Did you find them or did you steal them? Here's the rear ones you gave me. Go to your crap hole and find me the front ones. Bring them in, I'm done. The new AMD upper cowl panel. I checked it in like two weeks ago. We can't find the cowl panel. A little bit of a dip right there. What is the purpose of this anyway? Earlier, I was getting ready to go out and fix the quarter panels on Mark and Elena's car. I wanted to get them blocked out so they could get repainted. That should have never happened. And as I had said before, if I would have had a little bit more time and been a little more in tune to what was going on out there, I would have stopped it. So I decided that instead of just going out and fixing it and having them paint it, it might be better just to show them some of the little tricks that I've learned over the years on the Mopars. They're, they're tough because they have a, a little bit of a crown to them. And this whole area is just flat as, as a board and it's supposed to look like glass. Yeah, this thing, as soon as we, I put my first coat of clear on it, I kind of saw my imperfections. And then it drops down to this style line where everything starts to roll down and then back out again. We'll uh, get it handled and next time it'll be perfect and that's what we want. By doing that, it keeps that reverse curve. I'll clean it right up to that line. You see there's a little bit of a dip right there. There we go, and there it just disappeared on that last pass. Every car is different. These guys haven't worked on Mopars that much. These uh, Chryslers definitely seem to be a little different to work on than a lot of other cars, so. Uh, you got a 1970 Cuda that's just got what we call the slab side quarter on it. That's a long flat panel with a convex to it and a style line. Then it reverses the curve into the wheel openings. I mean, if you don't, if you haven't worked those and massaged them before, you're not gonna be great at it like I am. And like I say, these panels are the hardest because they have that friggin' gentle roll to them. And if you got a block that won't move, like those hard blocks you guys use sometimes, you can use them in a lot of areas. But when it comes to that, you set that on there. I can take those few little techniques and tricks. You can see it rocks just a little bit. Show Derek, which is what I did today, this one will roll right to the shape of it. And know that from now on, he's gonna turn out the same kind of uh, uh, celestial type of work that, I, that I've been known for over the years that has won me many, 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 many accolades. So you know how to block from there. Those are the main tricks is that stupid reverse curve right there and make sure your panel flexes, your block flexes. And you can see right here is if you had a hard block, you would have flattened these areas out trying to get down to that. But with this, you can just comb right into that till all that shiny is gone and you're a hero. Good luck with that. Sometimes. Now, can you see the whole, the whole CUDA? That's the main thing I want to see is, huh? Okay, if it goes right there, then let me try running this down just a little bit. Yeah. Is that good? I think that'll work. What is the purpose of this anyway? <laughs> we just got our equipment in from Defender, new security system that's gonna allow me to be able to keep an eye on the cars that are here, uh, kind of a big brother keep an eye on things, uh, maybe watch the guys turn in time cards for work they never did, who knows what. I wanna put one in the first assembly bay, the long one, one okay. pointing out to the uh, covered awning area and one down in the body shop area. I think it's a good idea to put up these cameras. When you get you know, this amount of money worth of cars around, it's a good idea to uh, put up some cameras so you can keep an eye on everything. Test, one, two, test, one, two, test. Yeah, I can hear it. You can, okay. Well, I think these cameras are good and bad. What I don't like about them is basically there's no place in the shop that we can't be seen now. Not that we have anything to hide, of course. Um, I think you put them up just to keep an eye on us. But I feel almost like it's a trust issue. But then again, if he's in there sitting and watching us all the time, what's he going to get done? He wants to watch us more and more. And I found out he can even watch us from his cell phone. That was him. Why are you doing it? He's just trying to experiment with it. Well, don't experiment with it. You want the one? <laughs> Uh-oh. Stop it. The deal lost? Stop it. There. OK. I didn't do it. He's got a chip. Oh, come on. You just got there and punched. God dang it. Here we go. That's great. Whoopsie. I'm going to hand a drill to you when you get up there. No, I don't need it handed to me. I just want you to make sure that the ladder doesn't slip. 
if that's all right with you. If you could go to your, actually, if you're looking at the camera, if you, you could go to your right just a little bit. The, the uh, wide angle lenses of these covers a lot, you know, it gives a lot of coverage. They're really good resolution. So Mark doesn't need any help, but I like to egg it on a little bit. And I'm going to tell you that camera adds about 50 pounds. And you guys wonder why I pick on you, right? <laughs> Where did you get the cameras at, anyway? Uh, Defender. They look pretty good. I looked, I, looked at all, I looked all over, and what's cool about these, I can actually check them from my cell phone. Oh, great. So you don't even have to be here to check on us. Correct. <laughs> OK, so that's copy there. That's good. So I just finished installing all the security cameras uh, that we got from Defender. There are eight of them throughout the building. We have in the front office, in the assembly room, back office production area, as well as out in the shop, uh, out in the area where uh, West Coast Metal gave us our new awning. It, yes, it's important, very important for me to be able to keep an eye on the cars. We've got very expensive cars here. If something were to happen, I would have video evidence of it. But at the same time, you got guys out there goofing around, turning in timesheets for maybe hours they worked, maybe hours they didn't work. Keeps an honest guy honest. We could, we could get that rack in here and mock up the, the suspension and start it going, I guess. I don't think he has everything to put. On right now, and you I'll be down there. It takes me about Josh an hour to get there. He's going to ride that horse. So as soon as, as uh, I'll tell the guys what they're doing. Hey, maybe we should ride that down. horse for a while. I'll see you in about Josh an hour. Josh goes on. Okay. Josh yeah. did it. Josh did it. Hey, Mark. What's the word, boss? OK. Um, the AAR has been done for like three or four days. I need to go get it. You got everything laid out? Everything that's here. Okay, I'm still waiting for like three more pieces for this front end. A couple of minutes ago, I got a phone call from the Media Blaster, Elon, down in Roseburg. Uh, they are done with the AAR. So I'm gonna get in the tow truck and head down that way, get it picked up and brought back. Um, it, we haven't been very productive. I do have one small project on the Daytona that I dispatched over to the guys. I want you to go just because it would help the body man get ahead of the game a little bit, sorry. The Daytona, the upper cow panel, the new AMD upper cow panel, I checked it uh -huh. in like two weeks ago. It's in the body shop, go find it. I don't know, you know body man, they put them everywhere, but just find that part, mock it up onto the cow, and make your marks exactly where we're gonna put that piece in at. We can get it cut, I'd get it tacked in place, and then they're off the hook and they can start doing body work on Monday. So if you'll just do that while I'm gone, I'll be back. It's an hour there, it's an hour back, and it's probably 20 minutes to load it. So I'm going for the uh, single task theory. If I give them one thing to do, I should be able to get back and have that one thing done, as long as I'm not asking for something that's impossible. I don't think finding the cowl panel for the 69 charger and marking where it needs to be cut at on the body is too much. So we'll see how it goes. Single task theory. It looked like a car again, huh? Yeah. Um, he wants us to put the cowl panel on. Um, I don't see it in here. You had it. Did you not have it the other day? He said he did. No, you. Well, here's a bunch of boxes from AMD right here. Uh, Fender. Mark sent us out here to find the cowl panel. I've been looking for two hours. Darren's been looking for two hours. Uh, we both double checked each other. Oh, wow. It could be anywhere. I can't find it. I hate to say somebody didn't order it, but that wasn't my department. Mark told us to go out of the shop, find the cowl panel the 69 Daytona Charger, put it on the car, mock it up, and then mark it up where it needs to be cut, and get ready to cut the car. And he'll be back and we'll cut it. Well, there's just one small problem. We can't find the cow panel. We've looked high and we've looked low. So there's basically nothing else we can do at this point in time because we don't have any of the other supplies, parts, and pieces we need for the other cars. So at this point in time, I guess we just take a nap. It's not like I ever go to the house or anything. <laughs> You need to go to a shrink, because he knows I'm going to be looking at that later, too. Whoopsie! Hey, Rail, look at this car on here. It's painted the same ugly color as yours. That beautiful green, green dark green, green metallic. Call, that green thing you call a car. Fart I love the best, Silence of the Lamb. It's when he gets all innocent when, uh, when Agent Sterling comes to the house. What are you reading? Uh, go, dog, go. Dr. Zeus, come on, you didn't read those when you Oh, wow. Well, maybe 45 years ago. Oh, yes. Excuse me. Um, I'm looking for this lady uh, that might have used to live here. Oh, was she a big frat girl? You know, um, 
You should probably call Mark and ask him if he knows exactly where that is. It would save us a whole lot of walking around. Okay, you wanna give him a jingle? Yes, sir, she was she was a large girl. Or you can come on in, officer. Uh, it's not like I ever got on the house or anything. <laughs> oh, God. Yes. Maybe you could say hello? I'm not gonna say hello when I know there's only two people left in the shop. Hey, how you doing? I was, I was in the middle of telling a good joke. We can't find the cowl panel. Cow panel is simply located somewhere within the confines of the body area, down where the Daytona is, where the Cudas are, where that little Sprite thing is. Okay, I saw it a week and a half ago when I checked it from DC. It's not in the box. So we need to think outside the box. I don't know what all that means, but just find the part, please. We've looked high and low. It's all I know is it's there if you'll just look. So he, uh, so she's banging on the door. It comes to the door, right? And it, or, or, you're a shibby old frat girl. You know, we ought to go look one more time because if he comes back and finds it, then we will catch you. back from Roseburg uh, picking up the AAR Cuda that had Eveland uh, Media Blast it and I am happiest I've been all week. It hasn't been a great week. Rather unproductive, but I am tickled to death now. Chris is going to be happy, huh? Yeah, it looks good. It's amazing, actually. It's going to be a nice one all put together. I'll, I'll just... Yep, beautiful. I was really glad to see the AAR come back in such good shape. Mark's in a good mood. We don't get to see that that often. Actually, I'm very happy that AAR could have turned out as well as it did because I thought he was going to go eight wild on us when we didn't have any progress on the Daytona Charger cow panel. Hey, you got a small problem, Mark. The cow panel, we couldn't find it. What? <laughs> couldn't find the cow panel. Upper cow panel you wanted us to work on, couldn't find it. exactly where to look. Not there. Who knows where it's at? Heaven only knows. Tell me he's kidding, right? Nope. I think it's funny. Tell me he's kidding. I the cow panel. I didn't really want to tell him about the cow panel. We couldn't find it because I don't like bringing him down. And he was up, so I just left him up. I don't like deflating him and bringing him down at all. You know what? Doesn't matter to me. Doesn't matter to me. I'm perfectly happy that this car turned out nice, and I'm not going to let you ruin it. Ready? What did I do? I was afraid he was going to be a little upset about the cow panel we couldn't find. The Cuda looks great. Look at the floors, Darren, honestly. I know you're a miserable cretin who would love nothing more than to find things wrong, but that floor is nicer than yours. Didn't we have to put a patch in yours? Why do you come with your brother like that? What this calculates to is hours, dozens and dozens of hours that we won't have to spend now working on replacing panels. We can go right into the small sections that need to be replaced and right into body work and start spraying yellow. I'm thrilled. Dumb and Dumber aren't gonna bring me down. That's their goal, of course, but uh, I feel like Teflon Dawn right now. Nothing's gonna stick to me. You wanna definitely make sure you keep, uh, if you have an original VIN label on these things, keep them. You want to protect it. They reproduce one that's exactly like it. I can't emphasize how important it is to document these cars when you take them apart. A few years back, I did a 1971 Roadrunner. At the factory, at the manufacturer, when they made the original door VIN label, they had stacked the R over on top of the one and you couldn't make out that it was a one. So it looked like it was short one digit. I wanted my new door VIN label from ECS, that's who makes them, somebody I chose a long time ago, who's the best, to duplicate that original look, and he did. Document everything. Even if you think it's incidental, document it. You'll be glad you did. I think that by the fact that this body is as good as it is, all the things that goofed up this week, I can guarantee you, we just saved all in one thing. We need a break. And that's, you don't need anything. You oh, need to go I'm to a psychiatrist. I think you run me down, okay. You need to go to a shrink. But I'm just saying, Royal, don't you agree? Yeah. I mean, we got set back this week, but just the fact that this thing is as nice as yeah, it is. be great. Look at the aprons. Every e-body I've got so far, I've had to put <coughs> And I'm not picking on you, but Darren's car, which is a really nice, solid old car, it was my old car, we had to put this apron in because it was all rotten through here. Shouldn't Here's one that's just beautiful. I know. Look at all the, isn't the that gorgeous? Battery tray being there. God, it's so nice. Tell me you're happy. 
it's that many we don't have to do. Darren, I'd high five you, but I don't want to break one of your nails. <laughs> With any reasonable amount of time, I can get this car painted and uh, start assembling it and get it back to Chris. Golly, that thing just rolled really easy. So I just got back from Roseburg a little while ago, uh, picking up the AAR Cuda from being media blasted. Came out beautiful, and, and so uh, immediately Darren's threatened by that, so he has to come running up and try to bring me down. Uh, he tells me he can't find the cowl panel, even though I specifically told him about where it was at in the shop, shouldn't have took too much to find it. They couldn't find it. You know, I, I have no idea how you could spend two hours looking for a part and still not come up with it. That always challenges my, my psyche way down in the deep recesses of my mind. So I decided I'm gonna go look for it. And I'm thinking, this is a miracle. I mean, they're really smart, and they say they look for two hours. I go out, and I look for seven minutes, and I find it. So how is that possible? So that gets me thinking. I got my new Defender uh, security system. So I go back, and I start going through the footage. Ghost Town, two hours. So I start sifting through the different areas. Ah, oh, there they are. I find them in the conference room, reading magazines. See, this is my version of dissension right here. You see him leaning back, not a care in the world, big old fat stomach sticking out. Darren over here peering at it through that one bad eye. Neat, yeah, because he knows I'm gonna be looking at that later too. Idiot. That just cost somebody a paycheck. We had an interesting week this week. Um, I would consider it about a, almost a draw for win and lose. Pretty close. Uh, when Chris Driscoll came down from Portland, got a chance to go over all the parts on his AAR Cuda and really reminisce about some really cool memories and uh, share some good stories about AAR Cudas and TA Challengers and how cool they are. So in the lose category, it'd have to be trying to put the uh, Sunroof Challenger back together and find out that I got Joshimized and didn't have all the pieces so that I could put the trinkets on that we did have for the car. So that would go into the lose category. What, they're already missing off my car? Um, win category, out. I did get some pieces off your car you don't know about. Lose category, um, <laughs> I had a simple little task for you to put the uh, cow panel in place and mark it for the simple. 69 Charger Daytona. Wasn't there. It was hidden. Couldn't find it. Really well it hidden, hidden. In, the, in the CUDA. Lose, we went over to do the wet sand and buff on Mark and Elaine in 70 CUDA and it was wow. wavy and you got a chance to do your, your joke seven times. I got sick looking down the sides of it, yeah. so wavy, yeah. I got seasick. Yeah. Don't beat the joke. I'm not. When you got stung by a bee. To lose, I got stung <laughs> that by a bee. That was huge. That was horrible. That was awesome. The only thing better than you getting stung by the bee was when we looked back through the footage and the bee hadn't fallen off yet still and he was, in your, he was in your underoos. Yeah. Why do you still wear underoos? <laughs> Water resistant. Whatever, you're grown up. So on the win category, I got to see what you guys really do while I'm gone with my new Defender security system. That was working? There it is! Uh -oh. Well, we didn't do anything wrong anyway. We didn't do anything right either. And in the win category, I'd have to say the AAR coming back and having one oh, of the most good. beautiful bodies I've ever seen in my life. It has beautiful body panels on it's it. It's going to be beautiful. And uh, it's a lot nicer than yours when, uh, when you got your strip, so. Really? Yeah. Mine didn't need the bottoms of the quarters. I've seen quilts with less patches. Okay, go ahead. That's one of my old jokes, but go ahead, Betsy. Ross, mm -hmm. 